let us continue looking at diagnosing different types of genetic interactions by the phenotypic ratios they produce in the progeny of a dihybrid cross. One type of gene interaction is called suppression. And we'll illustrate this with a mutant um, from Drosophila called purpleoid. which gives purple eyes. And there is also a suppressor written as SU that does not have any uh, uh, phenotype on its own. So if you are um, uh, have the uh, at least one wild type allele of both uh, purploid and the suppressor. So you are purploid plus over dash and suppressor plus over dash. Then you are red eyes since the wild type alleles are dominant. If you are uh, 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 homozygous for the mutant allele of purploid, so PD over PD, and you have the at least one wild type allele of the suppressor SU plus over dash, then you have purple eyes. If, however, you have one wild type allele of purploid, so PD plus over dash but you are homozygous for the mutant allele SU over SU, you still have red eyes since the suppressor has no phenotype on its own. Finally, when you look at the double mutant where you are homozygous for the mutant allele of both purploid as well as the suppressor, what the suppressor does is it suppresses the mutant phenotype of purploid and it reverts the phenotype back to wild type and so you get red eyes. And if we work out the dihybrid cross in this case, then our four phenotypic classes are dominant for purploid PD plus over dash and dominant for the suppressor SU plus over dash. You could be dominant for uh, purploid, so PD plus over dash, but homozygous for the mutant allele of the suppressor SU over SU. You could be homozygous for the mutant allele of purploid PD over PD and have the dominant allele SU plus over dash for the suppressor. And lastly, you could be a double mutant where you are homozygous for the mutant allele of purploid as well as for the mutant allele of the suppressor, SU over SU. And we know that these four classes will have phenotypic ratios, nine is to three is to three is to one. And when we write down the phenotypes, we see we get nine red, another three red since the suppressor has no phenotype on its own, another one red in the double mutant because the suppressor has reverted the mutant, uh, the purploid mutant to the wild type and only three are purple, which is when you are homozygous for the mutant allele of purploid, but you have at least one wild type allele of the suppressor. And 
Therefore, we will get a 9 plus 3 plus 1, that is a 13 is to 3 ratio of red is to purple, or 13 is to 3 ratio of wild type is to mutant, and this ratio is diagnostic of suppression. Next, let us look at sort of under the hood at the molecular mechanisms that can give rise to suppression. So there's two main mechanisms. One is when you bypass blocks. So let's say we have a, 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 a product A that gets converted to B by the wild type allele of the M gene and then B gets converted into some useful product so that uh, you have a wild type phenotype. If you have the uh, mutant allele of M, so if you're homozygous for the mutant allele of M, then this pathway is blocked and you are never able to create the intermediate B and so you don't create the final product. However, if you have a suppressor that can bypass this pathway, and so if you have the mutant allele of the suppressor, then it can bypass the pathway and create B independently, leading to the creation of the final product, then this uh, little s over little s will suppress the mutant phenotype. Another mechanism for um, suppression is a lock and key mechanism. So let's say we have the, the gene, the wild type uh, allele of uh, a gene makes a protein with a particular shape that binds to another protein encoded by the wild type allele of the suppressor, S+. And so these two proteins bind to each other and they fit like lock and key. And this interaction between these proteins, this binding is necessary to perform the wild type function of this protein complex. Now, if there's a mutation in M and it changes the shape of the protein, then the, the protein encoded by the wild type allele of the S gene, uh, S plus, will no longer be able to fit like lock and key and you will get the mutant phenotype. If, however, there exists um, a mutant allele of S which compensates perfectly for the change in shape of M resulting from, from the mutation, then the two proteins will fit once again like lock and key and the, the suppressor will suppress the mutant phenotype and revert um, us to the wild type phenotype. And of course, if you have the wild type protein of M and the mutant phenotype, uh, mutant protein of S, you will again be a mutant. And so in this lock and key mechanism, there are exactly two genotypes that will give rise to no interaction between the proteins. And those are if you're homozygous for the M allele, the mutant allele of the first gene, and homozygous for the wild type allele of the, the second gene, the suppressor. Um, so there is no possibility of 
finding compatible partners. And the, the other genotype is if you're homozygous for the M plus allele, the wild type allele of M and the mutant allele of the suppressor. So once again, there is no possibility of finding compatible partners to make the complex and give a wild type phenotype. And these two genotypes have uh, uh, will have a frequency of 1 16th in the progeny of a dihybrid cross. And therefore, one would get 14 out of 16 wild type is to 2 out of 16 mutant or a modified ratio of suppression for the lock and key mechanism of 14 is to 2. Finally, it's important to keep in mind these modified 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratios because they help us determine what kind of gene interactions um, do multiple genes that control the same phenotype have. If you have a ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 for the four phenotypic classes, that means that the, the two genes are independent and they have no interaction. If the genes act in the same pathway that results in a 9 is to 7 ratio, 9 is to 3 is to 4 implies recessive epistasis where the homozygous uh, 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 mutant genotype for one gene hides the phenotype, the mutant phenotype of the other gene. And similarly in dominant epistasis where the dominant allele of a gene hides the mutant phenotype of the other gene, you get a modified ratio of 12 is to 3 is to 1. And a 13 is to 3 ratio in suppression where the suppressor has no phenotype. And a 14 is to 2 uh, a modified ratio of suppression when the suppressor is like mutant. Um, so this is the lock and key mechanism. And it is important that we be able to infer what kind of interaction is happening if we are given data by computing the ratios of the phenotypic classes and then matching them to the correct gene interaction.